So thank you. Uh, so my talk, it will have four parts. And for the first part, uh, I'll start with something which is quite familiar for everyone, the sure functions. But let me remind you nonetheless. Okay. So let's consider sure functions as lambda. And lambda is a partition. So lambda 1 greater or equal than lambda 2. So on greater or equal than lambda k greater than 0. Uh, belongs to partitions. And if you don't know anything about sure functions, that's one thing that I suggest to start, even though it might not seem like a, a most natural point of start, is a Peary formula for sure functions. So, and I'm going to write it in a slightly different, maybe somewhat different way than you usually see. Uh, so, S lambda multiplied by G of Z is a sum of all mu in I of lambda, Z to the power size of mu minus size of lambda, S mu. Right, and so what is G of Z here? So G of Z is a generating function from, so I already used K, so from zero to infinity, z to the power m sm, and then i lambda is a set of partitions which interlace with mu, so such mu that mu1 is greater or equal than lambda1 is greater or equal than mu2 is greater or equal than so on, uh, greater or equal than mu k greater or equal than lambda k greater or equal than mu k plus 1 greater or equal than 0. Uh, okay, so that's. Uh, what is SM? Uh, uh, SM, a sure function. This is a sure function of one of row of lengths m. Okay. So just. Uh, okay, and so uh, so one way to think, if you if you have about this, to think about this, is 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 that your g of z is like your initial condition. And then this Peary formula gives you a recurrence relation, which is the following. So that if you, you can express S lambda 1, lambda 2, so on lambda k uh, as what? So you have, uh, you multiply S lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k minus 1. You multiply it by S lambda k. And then you subtract all the terms which are uh, extra. So minus m mu and the sum is over some subset of a lambda. Of a lambda. And so those that you subtract are lexicographically higher than a lambda. So that's why you can think if you don't know like about what sure functions are, you just start with j of z and then you just use recur this recurrence relation to, to determine all of them through this formula. Uh, okay, so that's the setup, and I would uh, that that's will be kind of the point of view. So let me start with the first, uh, well, of course, very classical statement, but it's the following: that if I start with a particular uh, generating function, which is a product from one to n, one over one minus alpha i for z, then the conclusion will be that, and here let's add that all alpha i are greater or equal than zero, then the conclusion is that all s lambda are greater or equal than zero. Okay, so that's the statement. And so why? Well, of course, if, you, if that's just your definition of sure functions, if you just see this recurrence formula, then it has a lot of negative signs. So there is no particular reason why this should be true. But of course, we know that uh, we can express s lambda as a sum over tableau t of shape of a semi-standard tableau uh, of shape lambda with entries up to n of alpha 1 to the number of 1s, alpha 2 to the number of 2s, and so on, alpha n to the number of n's. Okay, and so from this formula it follows that, that it is non-negative. Uh, so that is my statement 1a. And then what would be my statement 1b is that you can actually do better than that. You can start from 
j of z, which is like more general, e to the power gamma z times the product of 1 over 1 minus alpha i of z times the product of 1 plus beta j of z. If you take it as your initial condition. Okay, good to know. Okay, I'll stick to my original. It's not clear whether this is better. Uh, okay, so this is the conclusion is, and I in mean, some conditions, so alpha i beta j gamma greater or equal than zero, and sum of alpha i to plus sum of beta j's is less than infinity. So the conclusion is also that all s lambda are going to be greater or equal than zero. And so why? Well, this is almost the same as the previous one, but you add a bit of duality uh, and a bit, a bit of limits. So if you, I'm not going to elaborate here, but if you add some duality and take some limits, then this is what you get. And so this is, was my statement 1b. And now statement 1c is, well, that is it. So you cannot guarantee your non-negativity of true functions if you start from a more general um, initial conditions, and that's what's called Thomas here. Okay, so that is my, uh, my first part, and just I want to mention that this is related to classifying characters of infinite symmetric group, but again, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, okay, so in general, so this, so, so this is the setup, right? So I, I have some recurrence relation. It has negative signs in its definition. Then if we start from some particular initial conditions, I get positive values on S lambdas, which happens because we know that true function satisfies some property, and it's not clear from uh, my original uh, condition, initial condition. Okay, so that was the first part, right? So that's, so now let's move on to the second part, uh, just keeping this set up in mind. Okay, so the second part, I'm going to do the same, but now I'm going to start from G of Z, which looks very similar to what I have written there. So it will be the product from one to N, one over one minus alpha I Z. Right, and so as I said, that's basically everything that you can do, but I'm going to move out of this plane by saying that I multiply it by an operator which is a Markov operator called push tasep. So let me, so what happens here? So again, I start with this, I'm going to run the same recurrence relation, but I'm going to start with initial condition, which is no longer just a generating function um, in one variable z, but it is going to be a generating function which will be operator valued in this dynamic. And so what is this dynamics? So states of this, so this um, connects us with the, with the world of interacting particle systems. So states are particle configurations on uh, positions one, two, up to n. So there are no uh, second-class particles in this in this case there are either R particles or no particles and the rules of transition are going to let me just show you an example to you and then should that should be should make it more or less clear okay so this are states and then rules of transition as the following. Uh, so let's, for instance, consider the following state. So here is a particle, then there is a hole, then three particles, then a hole, and then again a particle. So that's n equal to seven. 
Okay, and so the push to accept means that some particles say jump and maybe they push uh, their neighbors in front of them. So let's see like a particular example would be the following. So this particle jumps and this happens with probability alpha one times c, right? So, well, z is a formal variable, but let's think about it as a probability. Uh, okay, so then this particle, it can stay and it stays with probability one minus alpha three of z because its position is three. Then this one jumps and it pushes the neighbor in front of it so that it's forced to move. And this happens with probability alpha four of z. And then the last one, let's say also, jumps with probability alpha seven of z. Okay, and so what happens here? It uh, happens from left to right. So, so it's also, for instance, because this particle jumped, it has pushed this one, so it already has no choice but just to move, and it no longer has any free will. Uh, okay, so what happens here is, is this is a hole, then there is a particle which is here, then this particle is still here, then here is a hole, then those two particles are here, and then there is a hole. Right, so that's, that's how it works from left to right. And if a particle is pushed, then uh, it has, it's moved, yes. What does the square function, right? Like alpha i squared d squared from there, does it do something? Which, which like? I mean, if you expand this one over one minus alpha. So this is just a constant, right? So this is dynamic, dynamics multiplied by, so this is a mark of dynamics the way I described it, right? So it's st some stochastic operator. Uh, coefficients are sum to one, then there is some constant in front. So I apply it and then I multiply everything by the same generating function that I had before. So I kind of twist it by a uh, multidimensional stochastic operator. It's, it's like a matrix. It's a matrix, yes. Yeah, but, yeah, but this is just a constant in front. So but don't you expand this product in that depending on what alpha you act differently? Is that possible? No, I'm... Uh, no, I just ha I have some parameters alpha one, alpha two, alpha n, and this is just just an operator. Just take as a form. I, I, I'm going to kind of explain more from where it, where it comes from. Matrix by the states of what? By, by the state by, by two to the power n states of particles, okay. right? So, is the, are these matrices? Do these compute for different values of z? Yes. And what happens if it goes up the end? It just disappears. Particle goes up the end. It just disappears. Yeah, it just disappears. Yes. Uh, Okay, so uh, um, okay, so, so that's the, the setup, and so the first the, safe, the first statement in this uh, second part is that well we have exactly the same well we don't have a, well we have what we have that all this lambda then if you use this initial condition same recurrence relation they're going to be non-negative. Now what does it mean? Uh, so this means they're going to be uh, equal to a positive constant. Multiplied by a Markov operator. So they're not going, they're not going to depend on Z. Z is an auxiliary parameter, but they're going to be Markov operators in those variables alpha i's, and even though the recurrence relation has a lot of minuses, any matrix coefficient will be a non-negative. So it's not just one number that is non-negative, but it is a mark of dynamics. So every coefficient is a non-negative. Okay, so that's, that's, that, that is a statement. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yes, so, so your initial, initial condition is, is exactly this, is this one. This is, this is also the initial condition, right? Oh, the, uh, the SMs are the coefficients. Yes, they are the coefficients, yes. Um, okay, so let's see a bit why, wh where does it come from, uh, where, where does this come from? So this is where we connect with RSK. So what's the size of the matrix? Two to the power n by two to the power n. So at every- N related to lambda. N, n is some fixed number. Uh, lambda has at most n rows. Okay, so there is something called Plactic Algebra, which uh, 
uh, formalizes insertion tableau in RSK algorithm. So it's, it works the following way. So it's generated by uh, one to n. So, sorry. Mm -hmm. Clarify yes. Mm -hmm. this, this is a theorem uh, that you're trying to prove, or this is like a prequel. So every so okay. So the structure is the following. So one a like all those things which I circle, they will be like theorems or. Well, I mean, this is not like a C, I, I mean, it's, it's something classical, just reinterpret, reinterpretation of uh, of uh, something classical in a slightly different way. Uh, but it's a true statement. So that's what they what I say. So let's call it a theorem. Yes. Uh, and now you're proving it or you're doing something else? Uh, and now I am going to explain, basically proving it, yeah, but uh, kind of explaining you what, what happens. With it. So let me put here word y. So uh, OK, so 1 to n are generators. Uh, and then you have some relations. So you mod by relations x z y is equal to z x y over x less or equal than y less than z. So this is so called Knuth relation. And y x z is equal to y z x over x uh, less than y less or equal than z. So here is an algebra. Now I'm, I want to show that this, to show you that this algebra is related to this, to this question that I'm talking about. Um, so, so let's call it lactic algebra. Uh, Okay, so the plectic algebra, as a basis, it is spanned by semi-standard Yan tableau, where semi-standard Yan tableau is read as a word in this lattice according to the following. So let me again give you an example. So one, four, three, five. That's a semi-standard Yan tableau that corresponds to the word three, four, one, one, five. So you read it row by row, starting from the bottom row, and then you move uh, move on top. So that's uh, that's a uh, uh, basis of this algebra. And then multiplying by a letter on the left is this RSK insertion. So multiplying by x on the left is uh, RSK column insertion. Of x. Okay, so, an, so how does it work? Uh, as an example, uh, so for instance, if I multiply by two. This tableau. One, one, three, four. And here I have five. Then two comes in, pushes away three, which comes into the second column, pushes away four, pushes away five, and so on. And so it becomes the following tableau. One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's that's how it works in general. So now, how do, how is it related to this to this example? So this algebra, the way I defined it, it's a non-commutative algebra, but inside it leave uh, leaves a very nice commutative algebra. So you can consider what's called plactic sure functions. which are going to be defined very similar to usual sure functions. So they are sums over all t of shape lambda. Uh, we take this now, this element t, even, and we multiply it by alpha 1 to the number of 1s, alpha 2 to the number of 2s, 
and so on, alpha n. To the number of n's. And now all such elements, they all commute with each other. So it's a commutative algebra which sits inside this non-commutative algebra. Now, this, in this situation, all those dynamics commute. So how can we interpret? So I want to leave, it, leave this example here so that we can see what happens with it. Uh, OK, so now reinterpretation of this push tasip will be the following. This. Okay, so the first thing what you do is you convert your particle configuration to a one uh, column, uh, one column table uh, to a table. So let's do it here. So here, actually, the holes are going to correspond to entries. So here, holes are at position 2 and 6. So this will be 2, 6. OK, so then you multiply it on the left. by this g of z. Right, so remember that this generating function, this was previously a generating function. But what is it now? It is just a product over from 1 to n, 1 over 1 minus alpha i z uh, times the sum m from 0 to infinity, uh, uh, z to the power m. Uh, now, plectic sure function. Okay. And so what you can see is that actually the push step is nothing but multiplication in this algebra by this element. And so let's see it in our example. Okay, so multiply on the left by this and then read the first column. Okay, so, so what is our, uh, so we have this 2, 6, right, in our example, and we go to 1, 4, 7. So what can be multiplied with? Well, we multiply by a combination of rows, which we insert letter by letter. And so what, what are these rows? So what do we know about them? So we know that we have some number of ones. So ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens. And so so how can we, so if we are performing RSK insertion of these letters one by one, so what do we know about this word? So, so number of sevens, this must be greater than zero, right? Because the seven is uh, at the end of this column. Uh, and so the, it must appear. Uh, but what, whichever the number of sevens is, uh, it, when we multiply by this rule, it will still be a seven there, right? Because if we insert a seven the second time, it, it, will, it will leave it be. Okay, so the number of six and fives is uh, can be arbitrary. Then number of fours must be greater than zero. Number of threes is arbitrary. Uh, number of twos is also arbitrary, and uh, number of ones is. Uh, No, number, number of, of, of ones must be greater than zero. Okay, because yeah, so that must be, must be one. And actually, threes, I, sorry, so number, number of threes is actually zero. 
right? Because there is no three. And then this one is arbitrary. And so you see, you know, how those things they come from this pro this probability weight, right? So so this is alpha seven z divided by one over or by one minus alpha seven z. So it comes from the condition that you must have at least a positive number of seven. So you sum a geometric series here, right? And same for for all this as other places. Okay. So so the the, the the result is that you can reinterpret this push tacep as a multiplication in the Plactic algebra by this specific element. Where do the 1 minus alpha z terms come in this Like, I see the z to the n. Or, uh, if I take this generating function. Well, you take, you take this, so, so this is generating function. It also contains alphas. But you also multiply by this, by this coefficient in front. Uh, you, uh, f to make this uh, uh, a mark of dynamics, so that for all sure functions, because it's already. I mean, if you if you just replace here, uh, oh sorry, you do, you divide by this. Yeah, you divide this by by, by that, right? Because this is this, this, this sum is equal to this expression, so it's a generating function. Uh, and then you divide it by it to make it a, um, to make it a mark of dynamics. Uh, okay. So you um, okay. Uh, so you see that, that now now that this does, does it answer the question or not? I feel that not. Uh, you, you know, I, I what, what I'm saying is that if you, if it's not a plactic function but just a regular function, if you take this generating function, the sum of generating function, that it will be a product of this geometric series, which will be this one. So that's why I want to divide it to make it into a Markov operator. So it's a normalization constant. Uh, okay, but so now when I reinterpreted this, so what about my statement? To a here, well, because I'm multiplying by, because n now everything is defined with this plactic function, sure functions, but those plactic sure functions, we know that they commute. So all the computations with them are going to be as computations with the regular sure functions. So uh, it means No, it's, it's not obvious. It's uh, something combinatorial that you can prove from this Knuth relations. Uh, so uh, the conclusion is that each lambda corresponds to, uh, well, action on the left. By this S lambda plactic. So that's why it's not negative. Right, because it's an action by a by an element which is itself in a negative combination of of some monomials. So that's why the result uh, it follows that uh, all matrix elements are non-negative. Right. So 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 let let me, let me recap here. So so what, what I'm saying basically is that I have defined this recurrence relation in terms of operators. It has negative signs. The claim is that all matrix elements are non-negative. Why is that? Because we reinterpret everything in terms of plactic algebra, and all actions live in certain commutative subalgebra. So we can express this as an action by uh, S lambda plactic, um, and, 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 and that's why it's, an, it's not negative. Okay, so let me leave it, leave it be here, and let's, let me move to the third part. Okay, so now let's move. So, so, so these are two pieces of this construction. Now let's m move from sure to whole little bit. Symmetric functions. So what changes when I move from sure to whole little bit? I introduce this parameter, extra parameter t, which is between 0 and 1. And everything becomes dependent on this t. So what changes? OK, so I don't need this anymore. Uh, 
Uh, so now my g of z is no longer uh, my g of z becomes also involves parameter t. So it's a product, let's say, 1 minus t alpha zi divided but by 1 minus alpha zi. And then the um, alpha i z is 6. Uh, and then the Peary formula also changes slightly. It becomes that if you take a P lambda and if you multiply it by G of Z, uh, then you get again this, a similar sum of a mu inside the interlacing of lambda. You have Z to the power size of mu minus size of lambda, uh, P mu, where this is a whole little wood function, but now you get some extra coefficient phi mu lambda, which depends on T. So previously it was one, but now you get some extra coefficient which depends on t, uh, and is, is one whenever t is equal to zero. Okay, but so this is our third part. So let's state similar statements. And again, t is the generating series of the one row. Yes, uh, no, again, uh, so we move back to, so there was sure, ordinary sure, sure plactic. Now it's ordinary whole little wood, the third one. The fourth one will be uh, multi-dimensional whole little wood. Uh, so that's, but now it's just uh, ordinary. Everything is just ordinary. Uh, okay, and so then, then the statement 3a would be the such j of z from, from it follows that all p lambda are non-negative, even though again it's a recurrence relation uh, with negative, with minus signs. But here you, you, uh, you will see, and the answer is why? Well, because you know that the four whole little wood functions, you again can write p of lambda as a sum over t of shape lambda. Uh, some weight now, which, which is going to depend on t times alpha 1 to the number of 1s, alpha 2 to the number of 2s, and so on, alpha n to the number of n's. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the reason why it's going to be uh, non-negative in this case. Um, okay, and so let me, for context, add here uh, 3b is that you can do more generally g of z to be e gamma z, the product 1 minus t alpha i z over 1 minus alpha i of z times the product over 1 plus beta j of z. And the conclusion is that all p lambda are going to be non-negative. Uh, and then 3c uh, is that, oh, that is it. And that is a statement uh, which was conjectured by Kerov and proved by myself. Okay, but this is just for context. Uh, so, so this are statements 3a, 3b, 3c. Okay, so we have some points non-negativity for sure. We have for sure for plactic sure, and we have for ordinary whole little wood, right? So the fourth uh, part should be the fourth vertex of the square, right? It should be a statement for whole little wood multidimensional, right? So what should it be? Uh, well, the, uh, it means that all those, uh, uh, all those initial G of Z, uh, the statement is that this is the only initial conditions of this recurrence relation which lead to all positive P of lambda. So the statement was that that's true. So in the other direction, if you get something positive, then it's positive. Yes, yes. Uh, and so I, I, I missed some parts in my second part because, of course, there is also 
you know, you can think about, I mean, to be is pretty clear what is for the shurk. You just add like another set of generation to the Planck algebra, but what is to, to see is not, is not clear. But let me, have 15 minutes, uh, let me talk a bit about four. Okay, so that's, the he so here comes the, the real, um, I mean, the real, uh, what is this is about. Quick, but before you move on, is there some Planck I'm not, I'm not sure because uh, I mean the qu the question is not clear. Like what what is the family that you are looking for, right? So this is just gives you a particular family of non-negative operators, uh, and um, you know it allows you to classify. But I can I mean I have a feeling for what um, can be, but it's not so clear. So I mean the answer is the answer is no. Okay, so. It's, uh, you don't have a plastic version of uh, oh, that, but that's what we are now moving moving to, right? So uh, remember that the question is we want we are looking for a statement. Uh, some, sp I mean, we need we need this positivity statement first. I mean, plastic comes from positivity, right? So what? Where is the positivity? So that's my part four, right? And so what what would be the G of Z? Right, so now, the g so, so, so again, I start, always start with just generating function g of z. And here, uh, as before, I'm, uh, actually, I, I'm moving this number out. Um, so uh, it's, yeah. And here, I multiply by some, some mark of dynamics. Now, but what would be this mark of dynamics? So this mark of dynamics is nothing but uh, this stochastic six vertex model that uh, Alexei also talked about, and I presume the people are going to talk about. So this is stochastic six v. So what is it? Uh, it's again a two to the power n by two to the power n matrix. Uh, transfer matrix. So it's a transfer matrix uh, which is um, defined as the usual transfer matrix with respect to the following weights. So I, I label my spins 1 and 2. So 1, 1, 1, 1 and 2, 2, 2, 2. Those both get, get weight 1. Then I have weights 2, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 2, 1, 1. And so those, okay, so and this is, so this is uh, on, on one end the boundary condition is fixed, on the other end it's not fixed, it's not that it's fixed on both. And so those two sum to one, so they are, forget. Uh, okay, so two goes up is uh, one minus alpha i z over one minus t alpha i z, and this is going to be complementary. So alpha i z one minus t. So that sum is one. Okay, and then another pair of weights is is the following. Uh, it's two two and here one one and two two one one here. And so these weights are one minus t over 1 minus t alpha i z and the complementary one which is t over 1 minus alpha i z uh, over 1 minus t alpha i z. Uh, okay, and so such transfer matrices commute 
because of the young Baxter equation for different values of z. Uh, and so that's why everything is again commutative, right? So that means that setup is, is okay, but that's not the statement, right? The statement is that uh, when you get this, so here comes the theorem. Uh, so that will be like, so you run this recurrence, which is basically means you define a homomorphism, operator valued homomorphism, then all P of lambda will give you uh, non negative uh, well, Markov dynamics. So constant greater or equal than zero times the Markov dynamics. Okay, so that's that's uh, the, the statement, and you can uh, you can do it more generally. You can add dual parameters, but I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, so, uh, so why is it true? Okay, so the first uh, idea would probably be to just take a Planck algebra and then deform it with this parameter t. And uh, then, so we, we have this argument that works for, so, so you can see that for t equal to zero, this kind of construction becomes, a, uh, this setup becomes a setup that we had before. So you might, we might hope that maybe we just take it for general parameter t and um, and run the same construction by just deforming maybe some relation to this algebra. And so this doesn't work. And uh, it's, well, I mean, whenever you say that something doesn't work, of course, it, what does it mean in which generality? But you cannot add any, it's, it's pretty easy to see, you cannot add any relations to algebra by n generators and hope that this will reproduce the previous setup. So, but, so, so what happens here uh, is the following. So the proof, it runs in the following way. So first, uh, you, you can notice, which was noticed by Alexei, uh, that uh, weights of uh, whole little wood functions, they are uh, state sums of vertex model, uh, partition functions of certain vertex models. What, what do you mean by what? Well, so I have those weights psi, right? So, so, so for sure, the, it's a sum over semi-standard tableaus. All coefficients are one. For whole little woods, every semi-standard tableau gets some kind of coefficient, which is a product of certain terms, right? And uh, and so, 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 so this product actually, this combinatorial semi-standard tableau can be reinterpreted as a. Mm, as a configuration of a, of a certain vertex model, and you, you just see that it's a product of weights. Okay, so the idea is that we want to take this construction uh, and we want to lift it somehow to um, higher dimensions. Uh, okay, so. Let me say a bit about what do I mean by this. Uh, okay, so, re so recall that each P lambda, this gives me an operator on two, two n dimensional space, from one to n to one. To n. So the idea is the following. So the, the proof sketch runs by somehow there appears an extra spin and then it disappears. So it's the following. So, so this P lambda can be reinterpreted in the following way. So I take 1, 2 to the power n into a space containing one extra spin 0. Okay, so then I run some uh, partition 
function. Uh, so I So then I, um, so for partition lambda, consider its length of its columns. So lambda minus one prime, this is last column length. Uh, lambda prime minus two second last and so on. So after you do this embedding, you apply the following operators. Uh, you apply operators of some uh, partition function. So from zero to lambda minus one prime, then from uh, lambda minus one prime to lambda minus two prime, and so on. Finally, from lambda two prime to lambda one prime. Uh, and then you forget all zeros. Uh, I'm going to, to define it. So all zeros are replaced by these ones. So H is a transfer matrix for the following vertex model, which is, so I wasn't sure whether, you know, even if I showed you the slide, was it um, instructive or not. So, uh, okay, first, okay, it's, there's a file. Uh, okay, so here it is. So it has eight weights. Uh, so uh, basically, so this, this, this vertical line, it has zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero. Uh, so all the possible combinations, one is forbidden, it doesn't work. Two, two. Uh, so this is vertical, vertical spins. Um, okay, so one, one. One, two, zero, two, and finally zero, one. This is vertical spin. Now the horizontal spin, this is a pair of integers, x and y. So one of them counts number of ones, and the other counts number of two. So this one is x, y, x, y. So this one, x, y, is x minus one. Oh no, it's x plus one, right? y, this is x, y. This is x, y plus one, and so on. It's not good. And each of them gets a particular weight. And I'm not sure, I mean, I can, if anyone is interested, I can show you the formula, but uh, I'm not sure it will be very instructive for me to just write down all those weights. Uh, but I, I just want to kind of uh, uh, describe the structure of, of what happens, right? So, but all those weights are going to be non-negative. So what you do is you start with your initial configuration, you embed it in the larger space, so that the zero appears in your, uh, in your spins. Then you run this, Transformator, as a by the way, transfer matrices, right? So, what are the boundary conditions? yeah. So the boundary conditions are the following. So on the left, it is zero zero. So if it's H K L, then it means that you have K zeros here, K zeros here, L zeros on top. And here, it's a semi-fixed boundary condition. It's a all pairs x, y, such that x plus y is whatever is equal to whatever is the difference of those things that you, you also L minus k. Right? Okay, so that's, uh, that is the boundary conditions for, for each of this, and then you erase it, and that's what you get. And so how do you prove it? Uh, so you go back to the very first thing that I talked about, about this PAE formula, how they define a recurrence relation. You just want to show that these expressions, which are defined like that, uh, which you first, I mean, the way uh, at least I arrived to this is I first found these expressions and then tried to prove it. So that you, uh, you show that this expression satisfies the PAE formula by taking your G of Z, you apply, and push it through the, all those operators and use some kind of commutation, which in the end becomes a, is due to solution to Jan Baxter equation, but uh, a solution which now involves those three spins and, 
some x I mean those pairs as well. Uh, so that's 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 it. Mm -hmm.